Hi! Today we'll be reviewing how to process an international shipment on UPS.com. You'll find there are a lot of similarities to shipping domestically, but also important differences. And we want to guide you so you feel confident in the information and the steps required for an international shipment. First, go to UPS.com, select your region, and then click Ship. At this point, if you have an account, I recommend you log in to get full benefits, like being able to save products or future shipments, using save addresses, and more. If not, it's okay, you can still ship as a guest. I'll go ahead and log in. Now let's start. We'll do this in six main steps. First step, let's enter your information as the shipper, and then where and to who the package is going. In this case, I'm going to ship from the US to Canada. Since it is existing account, I have all the information saved. If no addresses are saved, you need to enter it. It is very important that the receiver's information is accurate. Customs work mostly with the recipient, more than the shipper. So if any issues arise, they will contact them. One tip. When shipping internationally, governments have a denied party list which contains addresses or entities that we cannot ship to. If we detect one, it doesn't happen often, we will alert you right away and let you know that the package might be held or returned so you can review the recipient and decide if you want to continue or stop the shipment. After completion, click Continue. Now we're in step two. Enter your package information and dimensions if you have it, but only weight is mandatory. I will enter three pounds for my shipment. Then click continue. In step three, you determine how quickly you need your package to arrive. Since I'm in no hurry, I will save some money with UPS standard. These are published rates. If you have a shipper account with UPS and have discounts, it will show up here. Now click continue. We are now on step four. This is the biggest difference between shipping domestically and internationally. We need information about the products you are sending for custom purposes. First, we need to describe the purpose of the shipment. Is it a gift, a sample, or are you selling these items? Choose one from the list. Second, enter a description of the products as a whole. Try not to be vague and be sure to describe the whole shipment. See the help bubble over here. Be aware that lots of shipments are held because this description is too general. Third click, get started. If you have an account, here's where you can reuse previously shipped products. Select the products and all the information will be there. You just have to enter the quantities you sh to ship. Let's say we are shipping one today. Then click Next. Now, if it's a new product, click Add Additional Product and it will take you to the previous screen where you can enter all the new information. For step four, let's complete the product information. If you know your product tariff code, please enter it here. A harmonized tariff code is a global standard code assigned to promote for imports and exports. They are also known as HTS codes. These are numbers between 8 to 10 digits. The first numbers refer to the product and the last digits are specific to the country you are importing to. If you don't have the code, we can predict it based on your product description to give you an estimated cost. Start filling in the information here. It is very important that the description of the product is as detailed as possible. If you are shipping a dress, please enter any other detail that you have, such as the material, color, etc. I will enter children math book. We will need unit of measure. If it's a bag, a case, whichever you use, I'll select a box. We also need the value of the product as package, as a single unit. Mine is $10. And the last detail is country of origin. This is where the product was made or assembled, and not the country you are shipping from, although they may be the same. Mine was made in France. 
Across all the fields, you have little tips you can use to guide you. There is no need to memorize all these steps. By default, if you have an account, we will save your product to your catalog for reuse. You do have the ability to turn off this capability here, but I recommend you leave it on for easier future shipping. You can have around 4,000 products saved in your catalog. Now, choose a reference and a unique ID in order to save your product. Now that we have entered all the needed information, let's input how many we are shipping today. I'm shipping two. Click next and you can review all the enter products and keep adding if you need to. I don't have any additional products to add, so I'll click I'm done. Now we're back to this page and I see that a commercial invoice is automatically filled out for me. You can review and edit if necessary. The commercial invoice is very important for customs. Missing or incomplete commercial invoice is one of the top reasons why packages get held in customs. Below the commercial invoice, there are some tips of other forms you might need. For example, the EEI or Electronic Export Information Form is for when you are shipping from the US good with goods over $2,500 or other items that need a special license. You can see which ones on that link. Also, you can see if your product qualifies for free trade agreement waiver or reduction. In this case, my shipment falls under USMCA, United States, Canada and Mexico Free Trade Agreement, previously known as NAFTA, North America Free Trade Agreement. We won't get into the other specific forms for this video, but they are great tools to avoid holds and reduce duties and taxes if your shipment qualifies. Let's scroll down and click continue. Step five, now we choose our method of payment. I'll use a credit card. After entering your payment info, you will see estimated duties and taxes displayed. This may vary according to any free trade agreements that apply or how accurate the description you provided was. This will avoid surprise duties and taxes at delivery for you and especially for your customer, the recipient. You can now use this estimate to inform your customer or to know around how much duties and taxes you might pay. To see a breakdown of the estimated duties and taxes, click the See Estimate Detail link. Click Continue when you are done reviewing. In this step, you can also choose how to pay for duties and taxes charges after those are completely assessed by customs. Here are the different options. It is possible to use the recipient's custom broker for some countries. After this, we can go to step six and review our shipment. Let's click review. Make sure everything is okay and submit your shipment. After clicking, pay and get labels, two pop-ups will appear. One to print your label and one for your commercial invoice. Attach both to the package. Remember, this is very important to avoid holds. At the bottom of the page, you can also manage your shipments. If you click Manage Global Parts Catalog, you will see all your safe products. You can edit them or enter new products outside the shipping flow. Now congrats, you are done. Now drop your package off with UPS and let the recipient know it is on the way.